I talked to my sister and she's definitely agreed to allow her son to come meet with you. She needs help with his motivation. She can't figure it out, so she definitely appreciates you. What about if I could get you a one month internship in the police department? But what about my parents? But I'll just start with your Aunt Jean and we'll kind of work up from there. You may know God, but you don't know my parents. He's gonna be miserable. Is that what his mom and dad want? See, this is not gonna go down well. Maybe you two are true servants of God. Would you permit me to present them to you? Servants of God, are you ready? Yes. yes. Here are your tools. One toilet plunger, one toilet brush. Now go and serve the Lord with gladness. She did it again. my man how are you doing this fine day what do you want nothing I was just checking to see how you were doing oh no you're up to something you're never this nice well I guess I do owe you an apology but you're not the only one who's going through stressful things in their lives you know what could you possibly have going on you met our pastor. <laughs> yeah, she's a trip. Well, that's one way of putting it. Man, you're doing a good job around here. Like I have a choice. Yes, you do. But you're sticking around here and you're doing a fine job. You know what? In fact, I think I'd like to reward you. Really? Reward me? That'd be cool. You know, I just left the meeting with the pastor and she gave me a couple of tools to help me become a better leader. And now I think it's time for me to pass them on to you. Wow. This is great. Finally being recognized for my leadership ability. I am a leader. Yes, you are. I believe that. So now it's time for me to present you with those valuable tools. Tools of servanthood. Congratulations. What, is this some kind of joke? Ask the pastor. Oh, honey, don't be so upset. Yes, it's true. It's often difficult to understand exactly what the doctors are saying to you. I understand that. No, I'll just come when he's making his rounds and we'll figure this thing out together. Okay, honey, I, I gotta run. I'll be there at three. And again, don't worry. We'll, we'll ask him everything we need to ask him. All right, sweetie. Bye-bye. What's going on? Well, before I answer that, I want to know exactly why you look like the cat that just ate the canary and didn't get caught. What's going on with the call? I don't know. I'm starting to feel a little suspicious here. All right. Well, Carl Wilson's husband's in the hospital. And as is typical, the doctors are only talking to her in medical jargon, which, of course, she doesn't understand. So I'm just going to run over there this afternoon and... See if I can't calmly explain to the gent the advantage of speaking in everyday English. Is it serious? They don't know. 
But Lamar, they have been married a mighty long time. I'm talking join at the hip mighty long time. Naturally, she's in a state of panic. Imagine if it was Mary. Oh, no. That woman is my life. If something would have happened to her, I don't... So you understand. Great, you can come with me. Um, I don't know. Hospital visits aren't exactly my strong suit. Uh-huh. I need to think this thing through. Give me a minute. So women preachers, not your strong suit. Mentoring former pimps, not your strong suit. And I know cleaning the church toilet, not your strong suit. And now I'm told kids, not your strong suit. Do you have a strong suit? Now wait just a minute. I am finally beginning to get used to you. Mm -hmm. And I just had a valuable teaching session with Jawbreaker. In fact, I think he's going to do just fine here. What, what's, what are you doing? What's wrong? Something doesn't smell right. Oh. Ha ha. Very funny. All right. Let's get to the issue at point. I need to know exactly where you stand on the issue of us trying to get more kids to the church. Lynn, I'm trying. I'm really trying. But kids, I'm just too old for that. Too old? I'm not asking you to get pregnant. I'm just asking you to help us come up with some good ideas. Would you be serious? I'm trying to be honest here. I'm struggling, and I need to talk about it. Come in. Billy! Hey, hey Officer Lansky, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Good. Good, good. My, 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 my. I don't believe I've ever seen you without your clothes on before. <laughs> oh, it's a comedian, isn't she? Now, today's my day off, and I need to talk. Hey, do you need for me to leave? No, no. You can give me a cup of coffee, though, if you could. Make it strong. I'd appreciate it. Let me take care of that. That's good. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Dick. Welcome. What's going on? Bad day on the job? Well, you could say that. I had to put two kids in a body bag this morning. Oh, Billy. Yeah. That's something you can't get out of your mind when you see it. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Fifteen and thirteen-year-old kids, that's all. Oh, my goodness. Ah, uh, here you go, Billy. One Thank cup you. Of coffee? Thanks. Dear. Did I hear you mention kids? Just what I wanted to talk about. You know, I'm too old for kids, so we need to let somebody else take care of them. What? I'm just trying to be honest, be truthful. The truth is, Billy just put two kids in body bags. Mm -hmm. Oh, Officer Lansky, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You know, it's easy to forget how much police officers have to deal with in the line of duty. We do have some good days, but in this situation, there were good kids, the neighbors said. Good kids. Problem was, the parents weren't home. They got bored, hooked up with the wrong crowd at the wrong time, wrong place, and they were shot to death. Jesus. So is there any possibility that had there been a place for them to go where they wouldn't have been bored and they'd have been safe, that they'd still be alive? Sure. But we have too many kids, not enough places to put them. Very interesting that you bring that up because Deacon Hall and I were just about to have a discussion on how we could attract more kids to the church. And like I was about to repeat again, I'm too old for kids. Besides, I lost my only son, and I had to work two jobs, and Mary raised our only daughter. We don't have any grandkids. What do I know about kids today? Did you know that she lost four babies, and she had no children? Lynn, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that. Most people don't. It's true, but through the years, I've come to peace with it, mm -hmm. mainly because 
I know in the depths of my heart that I will see them one day. I know that I know that I will hear them call me mom. And I know that I'll know what it feels like to have them put their arms around me and hug me. These things I know and I hold on to. So, I'm at peace. Four? I had no idea. Well, at least now you know that I don't know kids either. Animals I know. Cats, dogs, chickens, ducks, geese, those I know. But none of them were created in the image of Almighty God. None of them will be God's next generation to carry forth the truth of the gospel. Only kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now when they're dying in the streets. Mm. Just thought of something. What if your daughter gets married and she blesses you with a basket full of grandbabies? Are you going to run then because you're too old and you don't do kids? You know, I could take you down to the morgue and you could see those two kids. Mm, no thank you, Officer Lance. No. Give me a hand. Is there any possibility that we could just open our arms to the Holy Spirit mm. and ask Him to give us guidance? Lamar, I'm scared too. What if I fail? On the other hand, what if, just what if, what we do means that there'll be a whole lot of those body bags that stay on the shelf, empty. Wouldn't that make it worth it? Amen. Yeah, that's what I think. It was so funny. Honey, I laughed all the way home like to wreck the car. <laughs> oh, sweetie, I got to go. Uh, lunch tomorrow? Aren't you cute? All right, noon? All right, see ya. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> now, I sure could use a good laugh today. What's so funny? Now, would you believe it if I told you that I did something that wasn't exactly pastoral? In a heartbeat. Remember my favorite restaurant? Yes, that vegan place. That's the one. And you ought to try it sometime. As soon as they get chocolate-covered onion rings. You make me nuts. <laughs> but, speaking of nuts, this place absolutely refuses to put a hook on the back of the door in the stall in the ladies' restroom. You know, a place to put your purse. What do you mean, do I know? Of course I don't know. Point taken. Anyway, every time I go in there, it ends up being a balancing act. You know what I mean? Go in there, do everything that's needed for a girl to take care of what she's going in there for, all without putting my purse on that nasty floor. Father, kill the visual. Please kill the visual. Do you want to hear the story or not? I'm sorry, go ahead. All right, so three times, count them, one, two, three times, I've gone to the manager, and I said, could you fix this little problem? And he has done El Zippo. I'm talking El Zippo Rooney, not a zip. So apparently three times is your limit. It is my absolute limit. So today, I invited him over the table, and I handed him my purse. And I said, now take my little old purse into the ladies' room. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I told you three is my limit. So I told him to take my purse, pretend he's a girl, go inside that stall, do everything that a girl's got to do inside that stall, exactly how she got to do it, and don't you dare let my purse touch that nasty floor. I'm sorry, I'm done. I am done. I am done. <laughs> okay, but I'm curious. What did he do afterwards? Honey, I didn't know eyeballs could come that far out of your head. <laughs> He didn't know what to say or what to do. <laughs> and I'm just dangling my purse in front of him. <laughs> that is hilarious. What? That is hilarious. Uh, uh, Did you leave that collar on? Of course.
course I didn't. I popped that sucker off as soon as I realized what had to be done. <laughs> well, good. I'm going to be thinking about that all day and laughing. I really needed a good laugh today. Well, if you need a good laugh, something's going on. Talk to me. Check this out. All right. My ex-wife got my cell number, and she has been calling me day and night. That's not good. Well, she finally stopped. That sounds good. But then my sister started calling. And the problem is? Okay, short version. Mm. My sister gave her life to the Lord. Praise God. And now she's into this deep forgiveness thing, the 70 times seven deal. God love her. That's a really good thing. No, it's not. No, it's not. She wants me to reconcile with my ex-wife. She wants me to forgive her, remarry, and just pretend like nothing ever happened. Now look, I've known you for a while now, and truly, I would put you under the 70 times seven rule. Derek, forgiveness just seems to come naturally to you. Let me tell you what comes natural to her. Okay. Her nun stop adulterating. <laughs> her adulterating. You mean she was cheating on you? Cheating on me? Is the Pope Catholic? Lynn, the girl was like a rabbit. Anything with pants that walked by, oh, she dropped her carrot and she just go with it. And you accuse me of giving visuals? I got one for you. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> Every time she'd come home, I felt like I needed 10 cc's of penicillin. You stop it! Will you just... Will you stop it? <laughs> hey, honey, I haven't forgotten. No, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Get out of here. Just go away. I got a hospital visit to make. You're killing me. <laughs> Adulterating. Hello, it's me. I'm Tiffany. Excuse me, do I know you? I mean, you don't know who I am? That really hurts my feelings because he's the love of my life and I know I'm the love of his life. He hasn't been talking about me? Sorry, nope. Don't know anything about you. And what man? Derek, Pastor McKnight. I'm Tiffany, I'm his wife. His ex-wife. Not in God's eyes. Mm. <clears throat> so why are you here? Two reasons. One, looking this fine takes money. I can look at your nails until you know what I'm talking about. And these clothes, <laughs> they're so yesterday. All this takes money. Mm, okay, so you're high maintenance, I get it. What's the second reason? I need some of that good old marital bliss. And he's my man. He's been shrinking his duties and I need him to get down to business. Sorry. Sh marital bliss, shrinking duties, get down to business. You know what I mean. When the two become one, or you're a Catholic or nun or something, you haven't given it up yet, have you? <laughs> Lady. If I was married, my motto would be, I'm old, but I ain't cold. I ain't dead. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Back to Pastor McKnight. I have no idea where that man is. Last I heard, he was going to be very, very busy today, so I doubt seriously he's going to return. Pastor Lynn, you mind if... Uh... No, jeepers, not now. No, 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 no. I'm not doing this with you today. Don't you even think about leaving. You get back here and fight like a man. 
Well, 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 isn't it good to see you? Tiffany, what do you want? It's not what I want, it's what I need. And I need some of your good old marital bliss. <laughs> marital bliss? If marital bliss was a sport to you, baby, you would have your own billboard by now. Better yet, you would own your own Jumbotron down there on Highway 54, getting ready to broadcast the next sport. Don't be mean. I just a little lonely and I need a little something, something, you know? A little something, something? What happened? You lost your lifetime pass down at the local prison? Okay, you wanna be tough? Well, here's where I stand. You owe me money and I need it now. Just like always, money, money. All about money with you. Well, let me tell you something. I was released from my responsibility of you two years ago by the courts. So I'm not giving you another dime, no. I don't care what the court says. You owe me money and I need it now. Let me tell you something. I'm not giving you squat. Squat? Squat? I don't think that's a theological term. Give me my money. Okay, okay, getting a little testy in here. <sighs> Madam, I don't know if you've noticed, but this is a workplace, and whatever personal issues you two have, they need to be settled out there. Apparently, you don't understand. He owes me money, and I need it now. You? Apparently, you don't understand because this is not gonna continue in this house. Now, I strongly suggest that you step outside while Pastor McKnight and I have a little talk. Is that understandable? Fine, but I'm not leaving these grounds until I get my money. And I have a nail appointment. Don't make me late. 